Welcome back, part two of sex education in a sexualized cyber generation. Let's just very briefly talk about the sex science. Your children are in this desire-driven world which says to them, you've got to follow your heart. Desire is driven by the chemical testosterone in the brain. And this is so for boys and girls, it starts bubbling at puberty. We talked about the brain at puberty. And in the world that our children are growing up, they have been told that every desire must be lived out. Therefore, whatever you desire, you have a right to have it. It's not just a want or an appetite. It is a need that must be met. So whether it is premarital sex or masturbation or same sex, or even if it means I've got to change my body to meet my desire, it is your right. Because it is your body, it is your choice, you live by your desires. It's follow your heart. The word of God says, desires can be deceptive. Jeremiah 17, even Jesus said, out of the heart come these desires, evil desires that are not good for you. Beware the follow your heart. Teach your children. Now, we don't have time to go through everything, but I want to strongly recommend a book that we wrote especially for this Talking Sex by the book. It's for parents and grandparents and carers. And I will come back to this at the end of the talk, but I strongly recommend it teaches you how to go age appropriate in dealing with desire, in helping children to, look, to deal with these feelings of falling in love. It's driven by separate chemicals, dopamine, serotonin, adrenaline, this feeling of, I'm so in love with you, whether it be in love with the influencer or some movie star or with the boy or girl or whoever. Love. He started off by saying, love is love. Therefore, I must have sex. Wrong. Love is a feeling. Desire is a feeling. Love is an emotion. Yes, it is strong, the whole Bible from creation of Adam and Eve, celebrating the one man, one woman, naked, no shame, to revelation when Jesus comes back to claim his bride, to Song of Songs where we read in chapter 8, for love is as strong as death, it's jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Teach your children that the emotions of love, the feelings of desire, these are powerful, but they have self-control. It's a fruit of the spirit. Talk to them, teach them, demonstrate to them from the time they are very young. We're talking preschool. Yes, that early. For sexual intimacy is a binding act. You sexually intimate with someone, different chemicals kick in. Oxytocin, vasopressin, they bind like a super glue at brain level. There's nothing casual about sex. Sex is never casual. You have sex with someone, you bind, super glue, talk to your children, you super glue and pull apart, you leave a bit of yourself and you take something of that person with you. Nothing casual about sex. Talk to them. Talk, talk, I keep repeating this. From the time they're little, you, your responsibility to talk to your children. So we interrupt this program for a family discussion on sex, right? Some tips for the talk. Many times parents say, I am not prepared. 
I don't know what to do. Often it's based on personal discomfort because many of you grew up at a time when nobody talked to you about sex. Or maybe you learned it from pornography or from friends and it was all crazy what you learned. Maybe you never even talked to your spouse about it. Please talk to each other. You're watching this as husband and wife, as a couple. Please grab some resources. I talked to you about talking sex. This is exactly what you need. If you're struggling with, I don't know what to say, grab this, grab the other books I'll talk to you about and learn what to say. Go to some good websites, Protect Young Eyes, esafety.com, that's our government Australian site. Excellent collection of resources. Don't believe the myths. Sex, communication. If I talk to my children about sex, they're going to run out and try it wrong. All the research, I'm talking about secular research, tells us that when you, as responsible adults whom they trust, talk to them about sex, they put off having sex, they put off having taking risks with their life, even not just more than sex life. You are the ones who can make a difference. Oh, my children are too young. No, the age of first born exposure is 10 years and dropping. Your kids are being exposed to sexual imagery in primary school, even in preschool now. They are seeing gender concerns in preschool. My friend has two moms, two dads. Little Johnny is coming back as little Jane next term. The time for innocence is far gone. Not that they were ever innocent. We are all broken people. And oh, I should wait till I'm asked. Wrong. You'll be waiting forever. And if your children do come to you with something, they already have misinformation. You spend more time getting rid of the misinformation than actually giving them information. Finally, something that you know I see quite a bit is parents saying, oh, if I talk about my sex to children, they're going to go out and talk about it and everyone's going to think I'm bad. No, you're the one who's responsible parent. You're not bad. You're actually very good and godly in pointing them. So you're not creating good kids. You're pointing them to God's pattern for their life. You're creating godly kids. Keep your mind on that. And there's a whole lot again, it's in our book. It's never too early and never too late. We have a set of books that can be read with your children at primary school. We have three starter books called Me and My Family. Talks about different types of families. You need to be able to talk to them. Now we have Me and My Brain, which covers what we talked about in the brain. at Primary school level, Me and My Body. And, you know, it's all picture, very easy for kid type pictures. So I would strongly recommend you get these. We have three extension books, learning about sex, learning about pornography. Yes, primary school, because you better teach them first and learning about gender. So no excuse. You've got the resources never too early. Teach them your values, your beliefs. Be honest and unafraid. Don't be afraid to say, look, I don't know the answer to this. Let's go have a look. Let's find a book. Let's look at this. Let's explore. Or I will find out and let's talk about it tomorrow or day after or whenever. Don't just say, oh, we're not going to talk about this. Find a time and come back to it. And as we said before, roll model good intimacy. It's never a one-off conversation. You've got to drip feed your kids. And like I said, don't wait to be reactive. You have to be proactive. And yes, we understand you're anxious. We understand that you don't know where to start. That is why we're trying to give you the resources to do it. That is why I hope you are watching this today. Always look.
for teachable moments on television. Ask them what's happening in school. They'll have stories. Be open. If you are open, they will come to you. And look for gospel opportunities, reading the Bible with them. There's so many stories from Solomon's many wives to the rape stories in the Old Testament to the Samaritan woman who had all those husbands. So many stories. Don't shy away from them. Talk to them about these. And I just want to talk to you about two hot topics. Now, I am only covering it very briefly here. Each of them is a huge area. And I will specially engender. Needs a whole different talk to give you anything other than a teeny weeny tip of the iceberg. But when we talk about sex and gender, we talk about four categories. The first is biological sex. Stay with me here because we don't have time for details. Sex is determined at conception. With sperm and ovum come together. It is observed, and in all of you parents, you know that by the ultrasound imaging, observed visually before birth and only confirmed when the baby is born. Today's culture is teaching you and your children that sex is in some way assigned at birth. This is wrong, completely wrong. It's, it implies that the doctor or the midwife said, oh, we said, oh, good boys, what shall, we, uh, what shall we assign this baby at? Wrong. It's been decided, determined at conception. Now in about point oh two. I repeat, about 0.02 of babies is clear, determined at conception, developing in the womb, doesn't happen exactly the way it should. We have what we call ambiguous genitalia. That is, you know, XX, that's a girl with genitalia that you know, look a bit like a boy. Or XY, that's boy chromosomes, with genitals that look a bit like a girl. We call these disorders of sex development or DSD, common word intersex. Now, I want to leave this thought with you. Very important. Just because this is 0.02 of developmental disorders of sex development, disorders of sex development, commonly called intersex, that does not mean that sex is a spectrum, that male and female. This tiny percent where it doesn't develop exactly as it should. Not a spectrum. Third, because there's intersex or disorders of sex development, does not mean that there is a third sex, male, female, intersex, wrong. Male, female, clearly binary. A small percentage who have disorders or intersex. First thing, biology. Second, the way we behave is gender expression or behavior. This is a little bit influenced by the hormones and genetics in the womb, but largely socioculturally influenced. So you start off with like a foundational male female tendency. But how it is built depends largely on culture. Now, there are many girls who are not typical to girly behavior. In the old days, we would have said, oh, she's such a tomboy, so cute. And many boys who don't fit into the macho, masculine, kick a football, play with Lego, whatever. Again, culturally determined. Many who don't fit. We might call this gender non-conforming, or we might just call them sissies, or if it's a girl, call them tomboy. But this is the important thing. Gender non-conformity and non-stereotypical behavior is not an evidence of gender dysphoria. This is a lie. In today's world, your children are being told, if you're a little girl, biology, but you like doing boy things. You may 
don't even like to be a boy. That means you are a boy. Wrong. God creates good things. The biological body God gave your child has dignity and value just the way it is. Third category, sexual orientation. Now, in the old days, we talked of same-sex attraction, other sex attraction. Now there's a whole spectrum. And your children might come to you and say, I'm bisexual, which means I'm attracted to both boys and girls. Or they might say, I'm asexual, which means I'm not sexually attracted to anyone. Or they may talk about being fluid and attracted to one or the other. You see, today's world confuses this beauty. The Bible is clear. The word of God is clear. Man, woman created for each other. Desire, love, these are good gifts for one man, one woman in marriage. Genesis, Jesus in Matthew 19. Now, for a small proportion of people, biological men, biological women, this attraction to someone of their same biological sex can be an innate feeling. Remember, desires are feelings. But remember, behavior and choosing an identity is always a choice. I don't have time to do it in detail, but our book, Talking Sex by the Book, does cover it in a lot more detail as to the other books, which I will talk to you about. Finally, we have gender identity. Gender identity is this feeling of who am I? Today, there is a, a tsunami of children who are coming out and saying, I'm confused. Now, there's a whole lot behind this. A lot about social media, social contagion, peer pressure. But I want to leave you with one point here. It's one point of a huge information database. Over 85%, some say up to 95%, of children who say that they have these transgender feelings accept their biological sex at puberty. And some who don't, or most who don't, grow up to be same-sex attracted, please don't be, push your children down the trans pathway. Talk to someone who can help you there. As I said, this is a huge topic. I'm only just giving you tip of the iceberg stuff. Very briefly, the other big topic is pornography. Porn is everywhere. It is in their iPads, it's on their iPhones, it's on their laptops. If they, you're careful about it, they're going to see it from someone else. Porn hijacks and floods the testosterone, dopamine circuits. It lays down pathways. The young brain, remember I told you, developing brain, lose it, use it or lose it. What are you feeding? When they feed it and it takes over the pathways, it leaves pathways, it, it just forms pathways. Your children's brains are about five times more susceptible, sensitive to pornography than your brains as adults. They begin to only want porn. Their brains think, becomes like a source of sex education. And they think that is what sex is. That's what a girl and boy do. If you haven't taught them, that is what they learn from. And they want it. And after a while, the brain gets numb and you want more and more and more to get that high. I have talked to 14 year olds who have entered the addiction territory where the Research says this frontal lobes control area actually shrinks and you become helpless. Nothing, nothing means that you are like condemned to it forever. Praise God. We worship a God of forgiveness. We worship a God of renewal. I just put up the Romans chapter 12. Do not conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Claim it. Claim it for yourself. Claim it for your children. Teach your children to recognize porn. What is it? To run away 
and to always talk to you or to another responsible adult. Teach your children, you flee from sexual immorality. The devil's waiting there like a lion, but a toothless lion for us Christians, but it's still there. Teach them to run away at whatever age. I told you, even at primary school, we have the book called Learning About Pornography. It says in a very, very simple way that, you know, what it does to your brain. And it says in a very simple way how you have to run away from it. Don't dabble. So you see, some of you who are listening may be thinking, look, my kids have done this, or maybe even I have done it. Know that we are a forgiven people. We worship a God who forgives, and you can forgive. You don't freak out if something's happened. You talk, you love your children through it. You direct them. You are there for them. And if you need help, there's nothing shameful about asking for help. You have your pastors, your church, your teachers, but you, parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, all of you, take that God-given responsibility. Nurture the children. Nurture the next generation. Again, as I told you, we have a whole lot of resources for you. We have Teen Sex by the Book, which is for 15-year-olds and above. It's very research-based. We have Growing Up by the Book, which is extremely important today because that's for the puberty age. And today, kids are really uncomfortable about puberty. so. That's something you need to really talk to your kids. You've already talked about birds and bees by the book. And as I told you, talking sex by the book is the one that sits over it all and gives you a how-to. I'm always happy to hear from people. So that's my email, Kamalini, my second name, 1947. And my web, all these books are available at Kurong. And if you're in Sydney from another bookseller called Wandering Bookseller, you can find them on Google and also through my website and the publisher, YouthWorks Media. So that's what I want to share with you today. I pray that if you're listening to this talk today, you will be the one who's proactive, pointing the future generation to God's good story, far better than that that the culture teaches them. May God bless you on your path to be sex educators of a confused cyber generation. <laughs>